welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station Travel Show. Every fourth Tuesday of the month, we get to catch up with travel writer Debbie Stone. We call her the Fire Monkey. She got that name from a monk in Bhutan. She is a world traveler, as you can tell. And she's joining us to talk about her latest adventure in France. Uh, This was on a barge cruise through Burgundy. Oh, So do you think wine was involved? I mean, we're not even allowed. We don't have Burgundy wine in this country anymore. And I think there's a reason for it. But do you remember Burgundy wine? But anyway, she went out uh, again uh, with this amazing barge company. Uh, You can go to europeanwaterways.com to kind of check out their website and see what we're talking about. And also click through to her article about the experience on blendradioandtv.com. All the links we're talking about are in the radio show notes, no matter where you're listening from, be it YouTube, Facebook, um, let's see, Listen Notes, Google Podcasts, Apple, wherever it is, uh, you've got it there. So welcome back, Debbie. How are you? I'm doing well. Great to be back. How are you? Doing good. And I just called you Debbie. See, one minute it's Debbie, one minute it's the fire monkey. See? <laughs> you're confusing you're confusing these I listeners. Know. Really? <laughs> well, well, listen, now you know, but I, the burgundy, as soon as I was like, you know, and number one, burgundy is like one of the coolest colors, right? But Burgundy, oh, France. Yeah. So what burgundy wine, isn't that kind of the same thing? Because I know you talk about this in your article too about champagne, right? We can't make champagne other than in champagne. Right, right. But you know, Burgundy everything has to be. But Burgundy is is no, you know, is it's it's an area in in France, a couple hours outside of Paris, uh, and uh, you know they make wine, and there, you know, you can visit Chablis in the Burgundy area, which of course we know the town of Chablis and Chablis mm-hmm. wine, you know, and uh, you know you can visit the the uh, region of Champagne. Uh, which this this barge cruise does, and then taste the champagnes that are made there, and also the wines that are made there, and and uh, you know, so this to me, this trip is a wonderful trip for people who are interested in those particular libations, or just are really interested in seeing the scenery of this area, which is so bucolic and so beautiful with the vineyards and these uh, wonderful, you know, medieval villages. And oh. so, it, you know, it's it's a combination of, and of course, food, you know, glorious food. Uh, the uh, company European Waterways, their barge cruises are known for having incredible gourmet food and uh, with an incredible chef on board that uh, just will make everybody really sad at the end of the cruise when they realize the chef's not going with them so (laughs) right you know that's that's the thing about these barge cruises I find this fascinating because these are really like historic barges right that you know used to take cargo right and so now well this is a little different right it I mean how I mean are these historic historic or are these like a barge explain the boat thing because most of us like Whenever you hear a barge, you, I go right to like bays where you see them going in San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge, you see the big barges carrying stuff. So let's talk about what the barge is so people yeah, it, understand because it, it it's pretty darn luxurious from what I and, looked at. Yes. And these barges definitely are, you know, historic barges. For example, the one I was on, La Bella Epoque. Uh, or mm. at I can't, I'm not, a, I don't speak French very well, um, was actually built in 1930. And so they, uh, the company then refurbished them. And so they have these beautiful, sleek, uh, basically luxury hotel barges. And um, they have, I think they have almost 20 of them. I think that's what our captain told us. Um, they usually, uh, uh, and, and they go, and they go within um, Europe, um, they go across Europe from, you know, France and into uh, Ireland and Italy and Scotland and nine countries is, is what, wow. you know, you can choose from. But, yeah, they're, they're all um, the the format is basically a, a six uh, six night, I believe is what I said. It is a six night 
all-inclusive type of uh, a vacation. And it is wonderful because they take care of everything. So this one, for example, uh, we met in Paris. They picked us up in Paris and took us to their barge. Um, and on my barge, uh, the maximum passengers was 12, uh, but there were only eight of us, which was wonderful because uh, mm. there was basically a crew of five and then there was eight passengers. So you can imagine the, the personal attention that you get, the service that you get. And so it, it, it's wonderful. And, you know, people might be um, – some people might think, oh, you know, I'm going to be with a bunch of strangers. Well, we, my husband and I, were the outliers, so to speak, as I say in the story. There were six people, six from the United States, and they were all friends. And then there was us, too. And when you think about that, you think, oh, you know, maybe that's not going to, you know, how is that going to work? But I'll tell you, you know, within moments, you know, we were like a part of this group, and they were fun and Great stories, great sense of humor, and they, you know, really uh, welcome us into their uh, group of friends, so to speak. So I think that that is kind of the nature of it. And there mm. are people that are just individual solar tra solo travelers that go on this. There are families that go on this, um, you know, friends, couples that, that uh, will do this. They even, you can charter the boat and, and have your own group. Uh, it's it's a wonderful way of, of I think, meeting people and People that I think are, I don't know, I think that they're kins, kinship, they share the, you know, a love of, of travel, a love of good food, a love of wine, um, and, you know, good conversation. And so, to me, it, it's a win-win situation. So, I always tell people, no, go, you know, do it. Don't, don't be worried that you're going to be with, with people that you don't know, you know? <laughs> And the barges are pretty. Well, I like meeting new people that way. And it's an adventure together because it makes you get out of your comfort zone. You know what I mean? It's like, Absolutely. okay. And, and it's like, okay. Let, and it reminds you the art of conversation comes back. Yeah. Um, and you're all experiencing something new. It's like when they have happy hours at bed and breakfast or hotels, right? Right. You meet right. people. And for some reason, you tell stuff that you would never tell anybody. I don't know. Absolutely. It's weird how that happens, but it's honestly true. But when you look at the barges, they're so charming. Like when you look at the one that you were on, La Belle, La, I'm just going to say La Belle or La Belle, um, but it says France, so maybe La Belle. Um, it is charming. Look at the colors on it, the painting. And then you can see it's a barge, but it's so cute because you've got flowers on the side and you were going down these beautiful canals where, you know, you could see that the beginning of spring was happening, but you can eat on deck and drink wine while you're floating. Like, seriously, this is absolutely it's, it's I it's, mean, it's truly it's it's a really special environment that they have created. And, you know, they have this lovely like the, the main area, like a salon that's got a little bar and then the, the little and then the dining room and people just gather and they gather on the deck when it's nice and sit out and they watch, you know, watch the world go by. There's a hot tub on deck. There's bikes that you can use. And in fact, what happens because the barge goes very, very slow through these canals. And there's, you know, we went through, you know, 30 odd, 30 some lo odd locks that are still basically from you know, when they were created umpteen years ago. And there's a lock keeper who meets you at the lock to be able to help the boat go through the lock. And it's a whole process. And it's fascinating to watch. It's part of the whole experience is to watch going through these locks. But you go so very slowly so that if you want to get off, you get off at a lock and you, there's the towpaths, the pathways that go right along the, the canal. And you can walk for as long as you want and wait for the barge to come because believe me you can probably walk you do walk faster than the barge you can get on a bike and hop around and and ride around the area and villages they'll give you maps you can you know you can get as much activity as you want so if you you know if you would like to work off some of that wonderful food and the the the, the, the delicious meals you can just oh. get off and and do that and that's what we did uh every day we enjoyed doing that and different people would uh you know you'd meet different people along the way and and a lot of them were very curious about the barge and they'd want to go look at it and 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 talk to you and there were other oh debbie did you around. go did you go that's my barge <laughs> you want to see, it's my barge 
It's I'll give my you your ticket for six for six nights. Okay, I, it's my barge, <laughs> and if you want to see it, like you have to buy me, you know, a, a you know a case of really good Chablis. You know, I'm just saying, yes. like here we go. Like you start, you know, but I'm just kidding. But it's so cool because it looked like you were in beautiful weather, you know, where it's not too hot too, and then and just like the beginning of spring is so exciting because you could see the change of colors and, but you went, so you can cycle or walk or do what you want and get into the little villages because where you're, you're, you know, floating through. Right. It and looks so, so you know, charming, you know, and it's, and it's very, you know, it's a, it's a very leisurely pace trip. It's wonderful. It, it, it really enforces you to, or compels you to slow down in your life. And, you know, whether you've come from the very energetic and hectic city of Paris, and now you're in this beautiful bucolic countryside, and you're just meandering uh, through these canals, and it just is such a delightful way to travel. I mean, you could get really used to this type of travel. And in fact, it was so funny, because the group I was with were like, you know, should we just chain ourselves to the, the boat, and they can't take us off at the end of the boat, and we can just stay on it. <laughs> And it was just, I mean, they, you know, people just end up loving it. And, mm. you know, the six people we were with had never been on one of these before. And they just were so taken with it. And, you know, I had been on the one uh, mm -hmm. several years ago uh, in Holland. And I knew basically how it how it went. But it was, all, you know, this is a different scenery, a different, whole different country, you know. And so it's a, it, it's a totally different experience. But the, the main ingredient stays, you know, this is a mm. really wonderfully leisurely lovely luxurious way of of really luxuriating within your environment and what's nice also is every day there is a curated excursion so every day you get off the boat and you they drive you to uh, for example we went to Chablis and you go to the village there and you we went to a, a wonderful uh, winery called Domaine La Roche and we learned a story about how the monks came to the town and how it all started in Chablis and and then we had wine wow. tasting of course and then because this is in the Burgundy area there are so many different chateaus that you see along the canals and we visited several Several different chateaus and uh, oh, you know, but we the to, one oh I want to talk the cell the chateau I cannot pronounce anything French so please my I, my apologies but I'm I'm terrible at it but I I have to say it just so she knows uh Chateau de Ricey <laughs> dash you say, say boss yes so thank yeah. you it's Ricey yeah. but anyway that <laughs> that cellar that oh my yeah. gosh yeah I want to go it, in that cellar that's insane this, this um this one was wonderful and in this particular um cruise they uh you know you get to really rub elbows with some nobility and so at this show oh, mm. owned by a baron and his wife the baroness and so uh the baron makes um champagne this is in the champagne region so we saw his vineyards we got to go to his production facility and then we got to go to the chateau where we had uh lunch with the two and it was wonderful because we got to ask all these different questions and it's funny because you know you think about nobility and you know people who don't uh, you know i don't have any i didn't have any uh past experience with nobility and you think oh these people are going to be stiff and maybe whatever and and it was like the, they were so they were so warm the the baroness was just this effervescent woman who was funny and delightful and she told us all these different stories and so it was just it was a, a wonderful way to be introduced to this and think to yourself, well, these, this is this is French nobility. <laughs> wow, I know because I, I I think about you and your travels around the world, and I mean it's like every adventure. Like if you could sit down and I know you've documented them all because you've written all these stories, and you know, but it's kind of like wild, like the experiences you have with you know it the people you meet. I think it's part right. of the story. And that's what I kind of like about this barge cruise is like you meet people on the barge and now it's an intimate experience, that immersion, like that immersive right. experience, like what Nancy and I do with as we pets it across the country, right? You have right. this immersive experience and we're meeting people from all walks of life and it's an immediately immersive, intimate, and you better all get along. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so everyone's do making sure of that. And then you go to your excursions and as a writer and what you're doing, but these kinds of excursions where you're having a meal with somebody, not just, you know, there's, there's 
a tour which you learn things there's classes which we've talked about on shows previously um where you get to be that's immersive but uh, i think when you have a sit down lunch or dinner or whatever meal and you're also with maybe the group that you're with on the barge if they choose to do that excursion now you're getting all kinds of perspectives and i think as travel writers we develop that because you have to think about different people's perspective perspectives when you're writing something and thinking about something but when you're in that kind of group setting but not big like crazy big right and it's intimate like that um whether or not you're a writer it's but it is for a writer like really delicious that's got it that you know to sit with nobility and they're chilled out and relaxed and yet you're having you know I'm looking at all the art on the walls and things like I'd be like just leave me here to look at that you know <laughs> but you're getting the story from a sit-down meal that's that's special man and that's from, something you know, that from the, yeah and from the people that you know you know this this has been in the in the you know this has been in the Baron's family for umpteen years and it's it's there's a history to this property and then there's a whole thing where now what you do to maintain and to to keep this property mm. and you know the the renovations that have to happen so the tours help then with it, the, yes you know. and and then you know but you learn about their family you learn about you mm. know a, a baroness was delightful talking to how she you know met the baron and uh, you know all sorts of really you know warm and and uh, personal kinds of stories that really, mm. you know, really accentuated the experience for me. And we also, for example, at the uh, Chateau Comorin, we met with a count and whose family has had that castle since the 13th century. And he oh represented the 26th generation of the family and he lives there on site. And so, you know, the castle had a moat. It was, you know, amazing. And then not only did we get to tour it, but beforehand we had this wonderful falconry demonstration right in front of the castle which was was you know i mean talk about location 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 you know for something yeah. like this was just it was it was wonderful just wonderful and then another time we visited uh the fontenay abbey which is a, a unesco world heritage wow. site yeah and i've heard of that yeah lots of history lots of history and you know just colorful stories and a wonderfully warm and experiential way to to uh ex to you know really understand the part of the country that you're in and it, it it was it was delightful just delightful so i've got some interesting questions for you one the dinners on the barge so were you always mm -hmm. having dinner on the barge was that like the yes. norm because now you're going to go sleep okay so one of the meals you had because i know you're pescatarian See, we've just we've also just been talking about food quite a bit here. Um, the you oh you had fancy butter. I like that. Um, I'm going through your photos. The fancy no, but you know what? I love those kind of special details because mm -hmm. oh, it's just attention. It just makes life happier. Um, it's all about special I, details. <laughs> I'm going okay. Mussels and trout. That was it. Oh, so gosh. the trout. So from some of the chefs I know, they they talk about how Europe serves the entire fish pretty much and in america where we're kind of weak it, it's interesting when we think about in england they cut off the crust of the bread right yeah mm -hmm. uh, you know here in america right. well we don't want to see the tail the, the head and everything it doesn't look like right. they gave you the head of the trout but they left a bit of the tail or yeah. the back fin what yeah. you know i don't eat fish yeah. i have no clue so it, is that is it just that i don't know anything about fish or because I don't eat it, or is that kind well, of even, you know? But even in in our country, sometimes you'll get the whole whole uh, fish, like the sea bass or whatever it is. You get the fish, and it's just presented to you, or the trout, whatever. I've I've had it in this country as well, but uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, and uh, you know what was nice was is you know I do not eat red meat, so the chef would uh also, you know he would he knew this you you know they know dietary preferences and can can. Uh, you know, cook and, and deliver delicious meals to people who've got any types of dietary restrictions. And so, you know, I wonderfully got, you know, tuna one night and wonderfully, you know, and so I was able to, oh, you know, wow. you're, able to you're able to eat well. Uh, you might not be eating exactly what maybe some of the other people are eating, but it doesn't matter because, you know, they, they take that in consideration and you fill out a, 
a profile ahead of time in terms of your dietary restrictions. So it's wonderful. And, uh, the, you know, the chefs are, are, you know, very creative. We had a, we had a, a, a chef from Greece and, um, but you know, he, he knew French cooking, he knew Italian cooking, Mediterranean cooking. And, oh, I you know, mean, Mediterranean had, is Greek. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, it was a wonderful meld of, of those, uh, cuisines and he was always, it was like, a, it was always like this adventure for our, our palate, you know, our taste buds were always taken on this wonderful adventure and appetizers were like amazing. And it just, you know, and then I love the fact the captain, you know, dinner bell is rung. And it's like, I, I said in my story, it's like that Pavlovian response. It's like, oh, the dinner bell. And all of a sudden you're like, yes, I'm ready for, for my three course dinner, you know, whatever. Yes, and it's sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they have wines. Did they did, were the wines paired according uh, to the meal, or were they local from where you were going? They were, through, yeah, or? they were definitely regional. And so we, for lunch, we would have a choice. You could either have either or or and white and red to sample. What for and lunch? Then, yes, for lunch. And oh, for dinner, that's oh, because you're not driving. Wines. You're floating. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Exactly. And then the cheeses. Every day there were like a platter of different several cheeses and they would explain and go and let you know where this cheese was from, from in France, what type of cheese it was, you know, and what kind of taste it might have. And so, you know, cause cheese is often served mostly for dessert in, in France. And, uh, you know, mm. so, but anyway, that was always yeah. a, a wonderful the cheese board. So. Oh, yes. See, so, yeah, I know. It was great. Mm. It was, it was wonderful. The food was, you know, food is definitely a highlight of, of these barge cruises, but it's it looked like in the fruit. The fruit, I love the Ugh. fruit that you, you were having for breakfast. And it looked the like ginger cheesecake. I wonder oh, if that, gosh. oh, yeah, that looked like a little gooseberry in there too. Like Yes, I, definitely. I, and it was oh, so good. So oh, I haven't had gooseberries for so long. I was like, mm. um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I got excited there. Okay, so here's here's my weird question. I was thinking about this because when you talked about Holland and you know, saying about Amsterdam and everything and, and America is changing in regards to pe people smoking marijuana wherever they want. But it's really there are laws about where you can, but you could be legal, but you can't do it. And you can't just light up a joint in the middle of the street. That's illegal in most of these places. Right. So it's kind of like smoking, too. Like what happens on these intimate places um, with people who smoke? I mean, on a barge or something like You're that. A, is there? They don't allow. They don't allow smoking on the barge. That is really good. To, it's not a weird question. It's actually something Nancy and I would be. It's yeah. it's important to no. us because we can't really no. be in no, they, close they do cigarette yeah. smoke. You know, for, no, 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 no. Yeah. it's just not. It's just a part of their the thing. They don't allow it. Oh so, wow, uh, that's. I yeah. think people wonder about that. You know, especially when it's intimate. Like you could have. Oh, here's your smoking no. room. But on an no. intimate cruise like that, um, yeah. I would. You know, even if they smoked on deck, it would probably get to us. So, like, what are the sleeping quarters like? Because I know people are going to look in and go, "Okay, um, you know, uh, am so, I going to fall off the bed if we go over?" <laughs> and it's not bumpy because no. you're in a canal. It, <laughs> yeah, and actually, you're not, you're not, when you're sleeping, the barge is stationed. So you are not moving when the barge, when you're sleeping. So at night, oh. you know, in the, in the afternoon, you're going to get to where you're going to get to where you're going to stay the night. So they, you know, you will get to the place of your destination, and they will stop. And, you know, that's when, you know, you don't, you, you don't, do not move when you're sleeping. So, um, so there is no movement. So if people are worried about that, that is that is definitely something that doesn't happen. And um, the staterooms, they're small, but they're cozy. But they're also, they have everything that you need. All the amenities are there, and there is space to put everything that you have uh, in, in the specific areas. There's a little closet. There's a, drawers underneath the, the bed. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's wow. a place they for everything. Please. And, you know, there's everything, you know, everybody gets a, you know, shower and a toilet in their bathroom, wow. and, you know, so it's, but, you know, it's, it's a boat. And so you have to consider that, yes, the, these are not going to be these palatial staterooms, but they're fine and they're comfortable. The beds were very comfortable. Everything was fine. And what I tell people is, is that why you wouldn't be spending your day sitting in your stateroom either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're you're going to be up on top of, you're going to be in the salon, you're going to be talking to people, you're going to be eating, you're going to be on the deck, you're going to be off the boat, you're going to be doing excursions. So you are not sitting in your stateroom. 
So, you know, that, that is something to think about. You are really in your stateroom to, to sleep, basically, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, if you want to get uh, a couple, you know, you want to take a nap or whatever it is, you can, you know, but yeah. for the most part, people, people, at least the people on this part, I mean, everybody wanted to just kind of be with each other and enjoy uh, the experience together, you know. Yeah, I mean, you don't things. really want to be napping on a barge cruise, like, no, honestly. you know, I mean, yeah, you can no. take a nap, you know, if you're, you know, if you're tired or you're whatever it is, but you want to. But but I found that people were like, oh, I'm going to go sit out on the deck, and if I take a nap, they're fine, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You catch everybody out there like zonked off, and you know. Yeah. But I think I think yeah, then you're not there. I mean, there's there's um, destinations you go to for that. Yes. If you need to catch up on sleep, you don't do something as amazing as a barge cruise. No. To me, I mean, you don't want I, to I, sleep. You know, you don't want to sleep during I, this. I don't ever. Time, you know. No, I find no. I fe- I find sleep incredibly annoying because I want to <laughs> soak up absolutely everything that I possibly can. And so yeah. sleep is annoying. But then I know like when I have to go to sleep, I better go to sleep. I'll get crabby. So but of I course. think but being on the water is oh, just a wonderful. magic, magic way it to is. sleep to me is like, oh, that's it that is. feels good. And I want to do that. And I just think this is one of those epic things i mean this, that's what i was saying about you doing so many world travels is this one of those that you say was like something that was so epic you know just even you know going and meeting the barons and the counts and the countess the baroness the wineries just that experience is that something you would say this was one of those really memorable experiences I think yeah i think it's so special it's so different it's a different such a different way of traveling you know when people think about cruising they think about these you know huge ginormous cruise ships cities. that are you know 20 cities. 20 <laughs> feet tall cities floating yeah. cities with 3000 4000 people or more and so you know this is this is just such the opposite and it's so special because of the fact it's so intimate and because the, you know the service is so impeccable and you know your needs are all taken care of and you know you you can just basically relax and just enjoy everything you know and it's at a pace that is just so luxuriating in, in terms of uh, uh, experiential travel you know it's just so nice i mean sometimes we go to places and we're like oh my gosh i only have a you know i only have a, a day to do this i have a two day i have to run around oh. you know and so that that that, that is sometimes what happens with travel and that's that's okay that's what happens we only have a certain amount of time in certain places and we want to see everything but this is the type of travel experience that is the complete opposite and i think it's such a wonderful way to travel but slow travel you know and i think that's something we should look at because you know i think we miss a lot when we rush around and like you say we have to especially as travel writers you have x amount of days get this go um, and sometimes for yeah. travelers too, I mean, you go to a town, you can't do it all. And sometimes yeah. I just go, you know what, like Nancy and I've got to this point now, because we have so much that we have done and we're still writing and doing that. We're just like, you know what, each place, let's just do one thing. Let's just do one yeah. thing, do it well. And, you know, if rather yeah. savor it, you know, I kind of, every, everybody's different. Every everyone is different with what they want to do and and everyone's got different ages and abilities and 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 passions right and, and right. things that you want to experience but to me i'm i'm at this point like hey i i want to have that one experience of one park and and oh let's go to if we're going to get sandwiches let's go to the local place that we can get them from you know you know um, it's, it's, you, it, sometimes it's you have to value the quality over the quantity in an, in a travel experience and yeah it's hard you know sometimes you you know first time if somebody goes to paris well yeah they have a, a bucket list of things they want to see and do yes paris is you know has yeah. magnificent monuments and museums and of course you want to and if you only have that amount of time but sometimes it's just like okay stop take an hour and sit in the cafe and enjoy your yeah. drink, your food, whatever it is, and watch the world, watch people walk by and just take an hour where you're just stopping. You know what I mean? And instead of frantic, frenetic pacing, just tell yourself, I need to just stop and I need to take in where I am. You know, I, I really, really agree with you. I mean, you know, just the other day um, we were in Maryland I don't know we're recording this while in Maryland, but we we're on the other side of Maryland, the Chesapeake Bay. And we were staying on the River Wye. 
and nice. um, watching uh, os- Osprey's nest. But, you know, we're doing this very immersive pet sitting life and you live like the locals, literally. And right. so our experiences are a little different that way. But of course, we want to do our parks. And we had that opportunity to meet a friend who's like, oh, let's go meet at this restaurant. And I was like, no, we want to go to the park. It's sunny, man. Like, you know, we got to do our park. Right. And this is a friend that, you know, has been on our radio shows for over 16 years and finally get to meet him. And we went and he brought the wine. Don't I'm not saying what part because I'm not saying if it's legal or not. Um, But we brought the sandwiches. I said, OK, we'll do you're doing this. We'll do this. And we had a choice of, oh, well, we could, you know, make them ourselves or we can go get someone else or go support a local vendor, which is what we did. And when you went in, they were famous for fried or for their chicken. Mm. And you're then they had this is the menu of their specialty chicken sandwiches, or you could get the chicken, chicken, all these different things. Well, I went and got each one of their specialty things. None of us <laughs> knew which one was which, but we all, you know, it's like, here, yeah. you get this. You're... And it right. was so good. And we just sat on this bench with our chicken sandwiches, watching mm-hmm. people in the lake. We watched a bald eagle hunt. We had all these birds, people kayaking. It was so gorgeous. And it was at that moment, like, I was like, this is good where you can just sit. And he's telling us all about the area that we're in and just really understanding what it's like to even just like, if, if we lived here, like I would come here, you know what I mean? It was like that kind of um, local life where, and we, it was only, we were there for a couple hours and it was like, wow, I'm so glad we did it that way. And I'm not knocking restaurants, go to the restaurants and everything too. I mean, we supported one, but it it just those moments of like, oh, just chill out, like you were saying yeah. in Paris or wherever. Um, but you know, we were literally we were on the Chesapeake Bay. We always hear about the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah. And until yeah. you get there, and now we've bit we didn't even realize we were there before, like the Bay Area itself. Why? Because we were going too fast before. Right. And so now this trip, we're like, oh, this is where we were at. Look at all of this. And we've actually done interviews on the region before, and now it's all coming into perspective. And so, I think, the, you know, like I said, running around, I hmm. being, being, I don't know, being just very conscious of the moment and where you are, you know, there's a slow food movement. Well, you know, slow travel is the same thing. And I think there's been, a, I think there's been a shift with a lot of people, um, to really value the quality over the quantity when they go somewhere. And yeah, Mm -hmm. maybe they didn't get to see something that's, you know, really noticeable, you know, really noted and famous, but, but they got to to see other things or they got to experience something that would be much more memorable to them, you know, where maybe they were sitting in a cafe and maybe they had a conversation with a local, you know, or, or they were sitting on a bench and saw wildlife or whatever it is. That's or a something band that came into the cafe yes. and started playing. Like, then right. I, you're not getting me out. I'm not leaving. Right. And this is, the, you know, the barge cruise thing. This is the other part that I think is so cool. I, I've, you know, and I, I'm not knocking any cruise lines or anybody, but for me, this is more my style because when, when you do those other ones, like Nancy and I almost missed our ship coming back. In the Bahamas, we almost came, mm. we almost missed our ship. And that's because I was drinking Bahama Mamas and, the, and <laughs> there was a steel drum player in the plaza playing steel drums as a little kid. And then this whole band. And I'm like, I've got the Bahama Mamas. I'm not driving anywhere. And there's this amazing band. And we almost mo- lost our, our ho- way home. And that's right. because I was having such a good time. So, I mean, yeah. it was a great trip. And that was a memorable story from all that. And um, and then we had to do the captain's dinner and I had Bahama Mama. So I was lively, but, (laughs) and I was all let's roll. But, but this is the thing with the, with this barge cruise. I feel like it's not like, oh my God, the barge cruise is going to go without you, you know, and maybe you have to watch the lock thing. You know what I mean? So you do have to 
pay attention, but they're never it's... they're never going to leave without you. Believe me, this is not the kind of yeah you can w- run to the next lock. You. <laughs> you can you can cycle your way to the next lock. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not it's... gonna it's not good. You're not gonna die. Yeah, you'll <laughs> you know never I mean? you'll never you'll never miss the barge. Believe you're me. You're not I mean, gonna be of, stuck yeah. in another no. country while your no, ship no. cruises off without no. you. So they and take, I don't they and yeah. they take such good care of you. You know what I mean? It's just that you know it's. It's so nice. It's it's really nice once in a while to have somebody or some buddies to take that good care of you. Oh, it's that. nice to be taken nice. care of. We it all is. want the special. We all want to feel want that cared about, you know, and I yes. think that's what the word hospitality is about. So everyone, EuropeanWaterways.com <laughs> is the site to go to. I really want to go. Um, I'm hungry. I want wine now after this conversation. <laughs> I want some cheese because, you know, um, and I just feel like I need to go to a water view now and um, I want to go on a barge. I really want to do this. Like, I, I can't even, I can't stand do it. it. Do it. I will. Do it. I will. <laughs> By golly, I will. And I'll send you photos every five minutes. No. So everyone, Debbie, Debbie Stone, travel writer Debbie Stone, also known as the Fire Monkey, is here every uh, fourth Tuesday here on Big Blend Radio. So keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Again, her article is linked in the show notes and is also up on blendradio and tv.com. Thank you so much, Fire Monkey. We can't wait for our next time with you. We're going to be talking more about Europe, right? Absolutely. This time we're going to head towards Portugal. <laughs> One of your, you went to my bucket list city, Lisbon, and uh, I'm so happy okay. you did, but I'm also jealous. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Thank so you much. so much. <laughs> Take care. All right. All right. Bye-bye.